Du Buisson, Curvey, the Trolls. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I've got one here that was brought to me by a mate, Campo. Cheers for that, mate. Come on, you irons. And on the night when West Ham drew with Southampton. Now, I know that Northern Southerner Beer Reviews is not going to be happy about that. They really should have beaten us in the first half. They had a goal disallowed, but, you know, there you go. That's football. Anyway, let's get back to the beer. This is the... This is they. <laughs> Fucking, I ain't, ain't even had a beer yet. This is the Curve de Trolls from the Dubois, Dubuisson, Brasserie Dubuisson, to give it its correct term, I should, I should say. Now, you know my French. I've fucking done my best all my life to try avoiding that gobbledygook, but it looks like now I'm, I've got to try and speak it. But, yeah, that's what it is. Basically, uh, Dubuisson Brewery. And they're based in Belgium in the Walloon part of Belgium, in a region called, I think it's Pipe, I think that's how it's pronounced. And they have been going, believe it or not, since 1769. Well, they can trace their history back to 1769. There was a brewery on that site. But for, for years, for centuries even, it was brewing beer only for the locals and the inhabitants of Pipe and the farm workers. They were the only ones that were actually getting the beer that was brewed there and it was taken over by i think is it vincent leroy i think that was his name and he took it over i think in the 1800s was it the 1900s i'm fucking useless i really am slipping i should sort my life out but he took it over and he decided to up the game and start selling more beer further afield and this brewery is probably best known for the Bush brand of beers. If you look on the channel, I've, refu I've reviewed a couple of them and they're quite nice. They're very strong as well. They do make a point of having some quite high ABV beers. And I think I tried the Christmas beer, the caricature, the Bush caricature. And I think I tried the Amber as well. I think I've re reviewed all three on the, on the channel and they're all up in the 11 or 12% ABV region. So they're, they're quite high and that's what you know Bush beer is renowned for. But they also do this stuff as well. And this is the Curve de Trolls, which, I don't know, it, it's it's coming down as a, a lager. Some people are saying it's a lager, other people are saying it's an ale. On the on the beer, it says Beera Doppio Molto, which is double malted beer. So, you know, it could be anything. I, I'm assuming it's top fermented. Obviously, if it's a lager, it's not going to be top fermented, but there you go. But this is quite interesting in that it contains sweet must. Now, sweet must, for those of you who don't know, is basically fruit juice, but squashed with the peels, the pips, and the stems, and that's all gone into the beer. Obviously, it's been filtered. You haven't got fucking chunks of fruit hanging about in there, but that's how they do it, for more, basically more flavor. And there is a filtered version of this, and there's an unfiltered version of this. And it also contains hops and dried orange peel as well. So it's gonna be quite an interesting flavor, but there's, as I say, two versions. There's a filtered and there's an unfiltered version of this. They have actually uh, these um, Brasserie du, du Buisson. They've opened up two micro breweries. One is in the town of Mon. Um, if you're in your World War One history, you'll have heard of that. That's where basically World War One started for the British, and it's where it ended. That's you know the stupidity of World War One. You know what a what a waste of life that was. You know. They started, started and finished in the same, in the same town, which is you know, it's, it's mind blowing when you look at how many people died. I was reading the other day. Now I take the piss out of French people, and this is completely off topic. But I take the piss out of French. You know, it's I don't mean anything by it. Of course I don't mind French people. In fact, 
I actually quite like the French people. I've been over there. Um, we, when I was with my ex, her parents lived over there. I used to go over there, and I could not meet a more friendlier people. I mean, these are not these weren't the Parisians. These were people that were based outside of France, in sort of southwest France, not too far from Bordeaux, but Charente Maritime, if you if you know the region at all. And honestly, the locals were absolutely brilliant, really warm, nice, friendly people. So, you know, when I take the mick out of French people, please do not take that to heart. I am, there is nothing meant by it at all, apart from just a piss take. <laughs> so there you go. Let's, let's just reverse out of that cul-de-sac and get the disclaimers in there. But yeah, the um, point of this is being that the saying that they've got two microbreweries. One is in Mon and one is in a place called, I think it's Levan Nanouve, I think that's how it's pronounced. But they've, as I say, they've, they've got two breweries there and they produce this and this is quite popular, you know? So it's worth, uh, worth checking out. And as I say, it was brought over from, from uh, Belgium by a mate who went over there and came over again. Thanks very much for that, mate. But he, um, he literally just went over there and came straight back. So he was, he was there and back within the day. Couldn't hang about because of COVID and the restrictions. But there you go. Let's investigate this beer. Right, free 30 mil bottle. It is 7%. No, sorry, I lie. I, t I do beg your pardon. It is a 250 centiliter bottle and it is 7%. And I'm just looking on the ingredients here. They've got it in Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, Dutch, and French. And I haven't put it in English. See, this is what I mean about the French. I'm trying to be nice, and they do this to me. It's not the French, it's the Belgians, but you know, there you go. Uh, I can't really get, can I try? Oh, hang on. Blondo, they put it, oh, hang on. Why have they put AN as the British country code? Unless they're going to Anglia, which is Slavic, I think, for England. But they actually do, so I take it all back. Apologies. Blondale with fruity aromas, brewed with water, drawn from... Jesus. From beneath the brewery. Barley malt, sugar, hops and yeast. Oh, so they don't mention the sweet must, but there you go. It is in there. Trust me. They, it, they have put. They have used sweet must in this. That could be where they're talking about the sugar. It could be fruit sugar. I don't know. It could be candy sugar. Let's stop guessing. Let's get this open. Now I'm always wary about beers that've got curve on it because that is a a wine term and usually when I've got that curve on it it's a sour beer now don't get me wrong I like sour beers but I'd like to know before I try there is a cap with a troll on the front curve de troll as the saying goes or as the as the beer is called there's old matey on the front with a hop on his head yeah very nice and if this auto focus, Jesus, we've got we've got a new recycle bin delivered. It has come. It came today, and this auto focus, it, it's got your fucking name on it. Auto focus, so sort your life out, right? <laughs> that's, how, that's how bad things have got with this lockdown. I'm talking to the fucking camera. I, I don't mean I'm talking into the camera. I'm talking to the camera. There you go. Let's get it in the glass before any more shenanigans happen. Right, just looking at this, this looks like the filtered version. Or has it got some yeast sediment at the bottom? God, you can smell that fruit. You really can. I know they didn't mention it on the ingredients, but it's in there and I can smell that from here. That smells interesting. Now I did say that that wasn't, that was filtered, but I'm not sure now. That looks filtered as it was coming out, but I don't think it is. What are we getting on the nose? Oh yeah, there is a massive, massive fruit aroma on this. It's like sweet apricot. It's like, you know tinned fruit, like tinned apricot, tinned pineapple with that sweet syrup. That's what it smells like. There's a little bit of ethanol on there too, but this is all about the sweet fruit. 
And they said he's double malt. I mean, doppio malta, I'm assuming, is Italian for double malt. But I can't get any malt on there at all. It's just all about the fruit. That actually, there is, there is a little sour ester coming from that too, which is not surprising considering they've called it a curvo. Let's get this down the hatch before the head dissipates. Bottoms up. Mmm. Oh, that's interesting. Now that's not as sweet as I thought it was going to be. There is some ethanol on there, not too big. And there is a sweetness to it, but there is what appears to be hot bitterness on the end of it. And that's quite nice. I'm quite liking this. It's, it's funny, there's a sour ester coming from it, or a sour note. It doesn't taste sour at all. This is very much like a, a blonde ale. And it's a good quality blonde ale. Now, I was drinking Leffer yesterday, and to be honest, I thought that was just about palatable, but when you drink that, and you drink something like this, you think, Christ almighty, that really is not a great beer compared to the real Belgian beers. Now, people, I don't really want to talk about Leffer much, but people who drink Leffer and think they're getting a taste of Belgian, you're really not, not when there's stuff like this about. God, what a contrast from the aroma. That really is starting to smell sour now. But on the palate, there is a quite a nice hot bitterness on the finish on it. Now I'm not saying it's massive, but it balances out that, that sweetness from the sugar that's in here. And it is reasonably well-rounded when you consider what a blonde is. Now this is 7% and there is a little hint of ethanol on there. Not too big, doesn't detract from the flavour. It's not that warming as it's going down. So for a 7% beer, they've sort of concealed that ethanol reasonably well, all things considered. Mm. Yeah, that is nice. But it's really confusing, and I'm not sure whether it's this tulip glass that's doing it, because tulip glasses, they, re they really are, they really are designed to sort of funnel the aromas up and concentrate them. And, you know, if you look at my video on the, or my, re my recent video on glassware, you'll see, if I talk about tulip glasses, you'll see that the way they're designed, they're designed to impart the aromas, and it, it's really doing it here. And every time I take a, a sip, I'm greeted with like a, a sour, yeasty type ester. But it's not there on the flavour at all. It really is a well-balanced blonde ale. I'm really liking this. There was some, some fruit on there. And some sugar. No real discernible banana and clove. This is more about the fruit and the hot bitterness. Malt is sort of there, but it's it's negligible. The two big things in this are the the hoppy type bitter finish on there that balances out the sweet fruit. And the other flavours are sort of incidental, like there is a little touch of sort of caramel malt, very, very subtle. Little subtle hint of ethanol. And yeah, they're sort of way in the background. It's quite nice though, I do like this. I mean, I don't even know whether I should compare it to Leffer, but this is just light years ahead of it, it really is. And to my palate, doesn't really taste like a 7% beer. So they're getting this right, 
Well done, Brasserie Dubuisson. What's the verdict on Curve de Trolls? Yeah, it's really nice. I like this. And it's got it's got two big flavours in it for me. It's the, all about big sweet fruit and the hot bitterness rounding it off. And it's nice. It does make a change from the usual Belgian blondes, which are, they've usually got a type of banana and clove ester coming off the yeast, which is nice. It's fine. It, you know, it, it works really well. When I compare this to Leffer, I mean, this is just, when it comes to Blondale, this is just fucking light years ahead. Did you know Leffer has corn syrup in it? And you just think, oh. some Belgian brewers do put corn syrup in it, but why, I don't know. Yeah, this is really nice. I like it. I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. It's very nice indeed. Thank you very much, Camp. Oh, forget me that. This is really cheap and all, and that's why it's getting such a high mark. It's, it's a, uh, one, 170 euros. Very nice indeed. Very cheap as well. And... If you're in Belgium, or you, you know, you're doing a beer trip over to Belgium, then get some of this because it's really nice and it's cheap. One seventy, you cannot go wrong with that. So yeah, that is a solid eight and a half out of ten. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>